there, Alaskans, wherever you are. Welcome to the Must Read Alaska Show. Coming to you from somewhere in Alaska. This is the place where we talk about, you guessed it, Alaska. Where we keep the mainstream media on their toes and where we are standing up for what's right in a world run by leftists. You can find out more by heading over to mustreadalaska.com and also checking out the Must Read Alaska YouTube channel for some really great content. But first, let's get this party started. We want to thank our show sponsor, the University of Alaska. You can check them out at empower.alaska.edu. Thank you so much for the University of Alaska for sponsoring the Must Read Alaska show. Okay. Well, welcome, everybody, to the Must Read Alaska show. I'm your host, John Quick, coming to you live from somewhere in Alaska. And I want to thank uh, everybody who listens, watches, and reads Must Read Alaska. If you want to help keep the lights on here, go to mustreadalaska.com on the right-hand side. There is a donate button. Every five dollars, ten dollars, hundred dollars at a time helps keep the lights on here. At Must read Alaska, and we are not funded by some dark web nonprofit money conglomerate. We're just funded by everyday Alaskans that care about conservative news. So, if that is you, we want to thank you for doing that. And without further ado, we have a very special guest today. Somebody who has spoken all over the U.S. He is Instagram famous, but he's also famous just for sticking up for freedom, and uh, he cares. Uh, about the U.S. and it's, and it's succeeding. So, without further ado, welcome to the Must Read Alaska show. I'm gonna t- I'm gonna call you by your your name on your Instagram, DC oh. Drano. <laughs> Hello, my fellow Americans, way up north. It is an honor and a privilege to be on the show. Thank you. It's so good to have you. Uh, this is Suzanne Downing, publisher of Must Read Alaska, jumping in as a co-host today. And normally, those who listen to the Must Read Alaska show typically are used to hearing. John Quick um, on the show because he's basically our, now anchoring the Must Read Alaska show. And John, thanks for letting me kind of butt in today. Because when Ryan McGee, who's the uh, the president of Alaska Young Repo- Republicans, asked me if we wanted to have Rogan Hanley, DC Drano, on the show, I said, no, absolutely not. I'll faint. I can't do that. Um, <laughs> so we're so excited to have you on the show. Um, and for those of you who um, didn't read about it already, because as um, like I said, when Ryan told me that you were coming to Alaska, I said, well, can I publish that today then, please? And he said, no, hold off for a little bit. And uh, you're the keynote speaker at a couple of big events in June. Um, mm-hmm. One is out in Settlers Bay, which if you haven't been there and you just told me you haven't, you're going to love it. It's a gorgeous golf course, like in the middle of the Matsu Valley and the mountains that surround it. And you're just going to fall in love and want to buy yeah. a piece of property and move to Alaska and take over Must Read Alaska. <laughs> um, and then there's a second event in Anchorage, which is um, our largest city, of course, and uh, downtown Anchorage. And I am going to be at both of those events, everybody. So I hope that you will um, check out our Facebook page because I'm going to post these as notices there. And um, so that you can know where to where to get tickets. But first of all, so Rogan, you you must be Gaelic or Irish or something. <laughs> your your name is a little bit of a tell. Yeah, Ro- Rogan O'Hanley, originally from the Boston area. Uh, so you know, my mom was pretty upset when I ended up moving to go to law school in Chicago. She's like, "You were you were born for a city like this. How could you leave?" And um, you know, I, 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 it was a little tough growing up with that name. They called me Rogaine, uh, but I love it now because uh, the the two Rogans, you know, <laughs> Joe Rogan and me, I, I think we're doing okay for the name. Yeah, you guys are you guys are representing. That's absolutely true. And so you um were you went to Hollywood and you became an attorney to the movie stars, but at <laughs> some point you. You made this sort sort of a switch went on in your head or something. You just said, "I've got to do something about the the way that this country is going." And you you changed. Oh, it was a very big life change, and uh, sometimes I look back and wonder what I was thinking. But um, a lot of it has to do with faith, and and so you know, I was an entertainment lawyer in Los Angeles. I was working on movie deals, Will Ferrell. Uh, Seth Rogen, he's one of the bad Rogans, uh, and, uh, you know, did, uh, uh, LeBron James deal, Selena Gomez, all, I was effectively living a dream. Uh, but as we've seen, you know, Hollywood has gotten 
so woke and, and I uh, was there, you know, 2010, 2011. It wasn't as terrible as it is now. And uh, once President Trump won the election, I wanted to support the president of the United States. And if I said anything on Facebook, I got unfollowed, I got berated, harassed. And, uh, you know, I and in my career in Hollywood, if you were right of communist, you'd get blackballed. I mean, you have to toe the line very carefully there because it's a small world. And so I created this anonymous Instagram account, DC Drano, uh, which stands for draining the DC swamp because I just wanted to get my voice out there. And I thought memes were the most effective form of political communication. And, um, at about 50,000 followers, which was a six months later, um, I was presented with a very big dilemma. Um, I knew that the account was getting so big that people were going to eventually find out. And I also was presented with a, uh, offer to be a partner at a law firm, a competitor law firm. And they offered me $500,000. And I just knew that one of these was going to get destroyed. And so I had to pick one. And so I picked posting memes on Instagram and I moved to Florida, sold my house. And here I am today. So mm -hmm. Rogan, recently on your Instagram, you posted a, a, uh, a clip of uh, Tucker Carlson on the full send podcast and uh, Tucker made some interesting comments in the, you know, weeks leading up to his departure on Fox news was that, you know, we're all ran by, by a handful of people in the world kind of controlling everybody and that uh, news is just one big propaganda machine. What's your take on that? Having spoken all over the U.S., you know, shaking hands with influential, pe influential people. What do you think about that? Well, I'm really looking forward to shaking the hands of Alaskans because it's, in my opinion, some, you know, Alaskans embody what America truly is a, a, a courageous spirit, you know, living out, you know, farther in the wilderness, not as close to everything, roughing it through tough winters. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, but, uh, you know, Tucker Carlson, I think he has really awakened like millions of other Americans and pretty much in the Trump era to the corruption in our media, the corruption in our government, the corruption in our own Republican Party, the corruption in our medical institutions, in our courts, in our election systems. And I think Tucker Carlson, who you know has been in the mainstream media for 20 plus years, a lot of people forget, he actually once worked for CNN and MSNBC back in And PBS. <laughs> and PBS, uh, you know, and so it's especially tough for him. He's got so much, you know, kind of money and, 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 you know, networking on the line. And he started to take a more courageous path towards telling the truth. And he said that he regrets being a part of the propaganda machine, uh, effectively the mainstream media networks that, that pushed the Iraq war and that are now pushing the Ukrainian war. And I actually, uh, was up at Tucker's studio in Maine. He invited me up for a one-hour interview last summer. Oh, and man, I he bet brought that me was up. awesome. It is the coolest barn I've ever been to. It's in the middle of nowhere. You would never know. It's you know, it's kind of secret on purpose, but um, it is the coolest barn. It's got you know a, a bar. It's got all these cool books and memorabilia and then like a gorgeous studio. Um and he, you know, basically told me he brought me on because he was really interested in my position on the Ukraine war, which, you know, I spoke at CPAC the day Putin invaded. And I said, hey, this is not our war. Yes, it's terrible that he invaded, but we should not get involved. No more Iraq boondoggles, sending our American sons and daughters to die. And uh, more importantly for Alaska, you know, you're right across a small uh, body of water from a nuclear superpower that, you know, Alaska is probably the first one to be invaded. So I, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure Alaskans are a lot more hesitant about Ukraine involvement, but I'm looking forward to hearing what people say. So what, what's your advice to folks? You know, you, you had that kind of uh, parting of the seas, if you will, in your life that you made a decision, you had two paths in front of you and you chose this path. But what's your advice to folks who they just don't know how to get like take the step or they're scared or they're fearful or 
what are their what's their employer going to say or what's their friends going to say what's your advice to somebody who's used to just kind of being quiet and mm -hmm. not doing anything but they want to i was the exact same way i was used to being quiet and i certainly was nervous about putting my thoughts out there uh a couple things one i have learn myself and from seeing other people do it that once you dip your toe in you get comfortable real quick and and you never jump back out of that water once you're fully in the fight um you you, you get comfortable quick because this to me is a battle of good versus evil right now this isn't republican versus democrat it's it's good people versus bad people um not necessarily you know, on the other side, I, I think it's the people at the top on, 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 on both sides in many instances, the corruption. So uh, what I would recommend, you know, for me, I liked posting memes. I just like memes. I think they're funny. I think they're short, bite sized Some people like podcasts. You're really good at podcasting. This is a great fit for you. Uh, some people like writing op-eds. Some people want to go knock doors for candidates. Some people want to run for office. Some people just want to donate. There is a way for all of us with any skill level to be involved. I just recommend that you find what you're most comfortable with that fits into your schedule and to dive in head first, get involved. And I promise you will learn so much more about other opportunities and meet so many great people. And you'll just feel fulfilled. I'm truly happy doing what I do every day. And that's something that I didn't used to feel. Um, so I, I, I want it for everybody. And I want patriots across this country to, to get involved because if we don't, our country is going to be taken over by Marxism. How, how, where do you think, you know, come speaking on that last sentence, where do you think we're headed? We got election in two years. We got, you know, the media's got Trump versus DeSantis war happening on Fox News every day. Are we going to die in a pile or do you think there's hope for us? There's still hope. There's always hope with God and with Jesus. That That is something that I rely on. And it's it's something, uh, you know, I, I have full faith in this path um, that even though I can't see what's going to happen, you know, God's going to take care of me and so many others. Um, and it, it's, you know, I, I was at a fundraiser in Miami um, uh, last year for Blake Masters campaign. And it was at Peter Thiel's house who is, you know, got more involved in the 2022 midterms. He financed JD Vance. He financed Blake Masters and he, some other causes. Uh, he said, and I was kind of surprised at this at the time because he was on the Facebook board. He isn't anymore, but he said, we have about two to three years left to save this country from Marxism before we're irreversibly uh, entrenched. And I think that coincides with the 2024 election. Um, obviously we saw what happened in 2020 with the, you know, irregularities I'll say, because I don't know what platform this will be published on. Um, and uh, president Trump is, is is our greatest hope and and you know we're lucky we have governor DeSantis and he's in my opinion the best guy for 2028 i know some people disagree and they want it for 2024 but um if we do not win this next election if we do not overwhelm the fraud and ballot harvest harder and stronger than the democrats uh then i am worried that we could be thrust into world war three because these people are so corrupt and they will try to keep power at any cost. And if they have eight years, they will uh, send us into very dark times. What's, uh, you know, let's say you had a time machine and go back to your eight, when you were 18 years old, what's something you wish you would have known or done back then that you didn't, that, you know, you now have the experience to look back and, and think about and, and uh, gauge. Yeah. And the first thing I would have done is bought Bitcoin. Um, <laughs> I, I think I was a little too young even for the bottom of Bitcoin. But, um, you know, it's interesting. I, I, I think education is such an important weapon in this fight. And I am actually pretty happy I went to, to law school because even though I'm not a practicing lawyer, 
understanding how the constitution is supposed to work, understanding the legal system, you know, the pen is mightier than the sword. And there's a reason that they censor us a lot more than they've tried to seize the guns because words are the most powerful weapon to stop corruption, exposing the truth. And so my advice to people would be to get smart on the constitution, get smart on, on the daily events. It's not that difficult to, you know, get a little bit of background um, and, and just know when the media is trying to lie to you, when our health officials are trying to lie to you, when our politicians are, are, are lying to us. And, and, and that's the, the, the best advice I could give, especially to young people um, is, 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 read and learn about this stuff because they're very smart people trying to deceive others. So um, you're coming up to Alaska for an event. Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, we're, we, we're at the 20 minute mark. So I want to be respectful of your time, but um, tell folks they're going to listen to this and think, Oh crap, Rogan's coming to Alaska. This is awesome. <laughs> so tell folks about why you're coming up, what you're doing and, and you know, how folks could maybe come if there's an open event or not. Yeah, so I get involved with my local region in Florida. I speak at all types of events, high schools, colleges, mom groups, uh, women's Republican groups, men, young Republicans. And this particular event, we're, we're uh, working with the Alaska Young Republicans. I think the Young Republicans are such a powerful, influential group. And um, I connected with them at a Turning Point event, and we just thought this would be such a great idea to, to have me come up and, and to meet people. And what I want to get out of this, you know, I have not been to Alaska uh, as a, as an American, I'm excited to see the, the beauty of this state. Um, and, but I want to, I want to talk with the people. I want to get a sense on the ground, what they are concerned with, because what I try to do is be a voice for the forgotten people of this country especially the hardworking middle class, which is what I grew up in. My dad's a fireman, my mom's a teacher. And that's, that's the backbone of America. And, and, you know, I think if you want to talk about forgotten people way up there, uh, yeah. you know, you guys don't get as big a seat at the table as you should. And so what I hope to do is to talk with people and to bring back their concerns, not only to Florida, but to DC, you know, I'm friends with a lot of congressmen. I, I post to a lot of, uh, you know, followers every day. And if I can be a voice for the people of Alaska, especially when it comes to the energy industry and wildlife and, and fishing and, you know, what, what's happening with, with Russia. I mean, these are very serious topics that, uh, you know, Alaskans need a voice. And you're frankly, in my opinion, not getting it from Murkowski. So uh, hopefully I can do a better job. That's awesome. Well, Brogan, I thank you so much for joining us here on the Must Read Alaska show. Sorry for the technical difficulties on the front end, but we'll edit those out. We wish you nothing but success. And we want to thank Ryan for bringing you up here. Uh, we hope your events go well. And for folks that want to check out DC Drano, we'll put the links of all of his social media in the description for folks to check out. Uh, Rogan, thank you so much for joining us. Until next time, I'm John Quick from somewhere in Alaska. Thank you all. God bless. Thanks, Rogan. We want to thank our show sponsor, the University of Alaska. You can check them out at empower.alaska.edu. Thank you so much for the University of Alaska for sponsoring the Must Read Alaska show.